Hello and welcome to another Ellensburg Amplifier Repair and Service video. What I have today is a uh, four channel amplifier. This is the audio pipe AQX 360.4 amplifier uh, that a customer brought in stating that he had uh, shorted a channel while it was playing. So here, let's uh, let's go ahead and get right to this one. So I'm gonna fire up the meter here for you guys. And let's see. I've already done some initial testing uh, before I decided to go ahead and shoot a video on this uh, just to see what kind of parts I, I was looking at needing while he was here dropping it off. Because uh, uh, the owner of this amplifier is local, somewhat. Uh, so I wanted to give an idea what he's looking at before he took off. Uh, and you'll see that... Uh, the power supply here is absolutely, absolutely fine. So the power supply itself is still functional. And I haven't put power to this um, at all. There we go. Charges the capacitor. So that's, that's what I look for when I'm checking the power supply. So the power supply, I'm not showing any shorted transistors. That's not going to be my main culprit anyways. I do believe that uh, my main culprit is going to be this channel here where I have removed the uh, heat sink bars when I did my initial testing for him while he was here. Uh, so you can see here that we do have a, a short uh, between the collector and emitter. Uh, this is a 2SD718 and the other side is a 2SB688 uh, of, yeah, less than one ohm. So it does look like this one channel here is shorted. You know, we're showing a uh, capacitive charge on the other channels. So I do not suspect these to be shorted so i just wanted to quickly show you guys uh the layout of this audio pipe four channel amp it's your typical class a b amp uh, they're using the tip i think it was a 31 yeah the tip 31 and 32 c's there for your uh pre-drivers so, I mean, this is built pretty robust. It's uh, probably one of the better built uh, Class AB amplifiers when it comes to components, I should say, that uses these TIP31 and 32Cs. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove this board, and I'm going to remove those, those four, the two 2SB688s and the 2SD718s. Um, and replace them with new 688s and 718s. So give me a give me a minute here, and I will be right back with you. And for all you audio pipe fanboy tech slash technicians out there, these screws are very easy to strip the head on so what i do is i just go around and i break them free with a screwdriver first and then i go in with the with the power tools so save your wrists because you're going to need your wrists for a very long time
And then to make things easier to slide the board out, because all these audio pipe amps, you gotta you have to slide the board out. It's to take out two of the end screws here that hold the uh, the mesh in place. So that way you don't have to bend your transistors so far forward. That will allow for this to slide out much easier. And then I take all my heat sink spreaders and I put them in a separate bag of the screws. Because this heat sink compound, once you get it on black paint, it is a bear to get it off that black paint. So you really want to just kind of keep things clean and organized. It'll just it'll just help you in the long run. Uh, when you go to put this back together, clean it up and get it back to the customer. So just like that, I button up all the heat sink tie downs, screws that pertain to that to keep the uh, thermal paste away from everything else. All right, so I'm going to pull this. Uh, I'm going to pull this end off this face plate so I can slide the board out, and uh, we will. Be right back with you. All right, I have replaced the output transistors. I've got two new 688s and two new 718s installed into the board. So I'm just going to do a quick cleanup here real quick of the marker and flux that I left behind here. I went around and re-soldered all the transistor joints um, across the board. Um, having one transistor solder joint fail uh, really just means there's more to come. So I redid all the solder joints on the transistors uh, just for durability of the amplifier. And uh, just to try to ensure the longevity of the board itself. Uh, when you have solder joints that are coming loose and you start pulling high current through it, your chances of burning up the trace are greatly increased. So I just want to help prevent uh, that from happening. So just a quick cleanup of that uh, flux in the board there. Flip it over here. And you can see uh, the four new transistors installed in that bank there. And of course, before we go any further with... Uh, let me flip this around here real quick. Before we go any further with the amplifier repair itself, we are going to test the amplifier to make sure that all the sections are working uh, as intended. Let me check the end plate to see which side of the RCA is here. The input, input is... It's a four-channel lamp. It's an input. is on both sides, so I'm not sure if I have an option to do a single input or not. I do. Two-channel. So we're going to switch it to two-channel. The one furthest away. So the two-channel uh, input when switched on two-channel mode is the set closest to the selector switch here. So let's get some power hooked up. Uh, ground remote positive. Ground remote positive. 
Remote positive. Uh, where's my? Let me get my channel one lead here. And let me get the scope set up for you guys. All right, I got the scope fired up. Let me make sure all my gains are turned down. Uh, it does help during testing to make sure all your controls are counterclockwise. Let's go ahead and see what our power supply does here. Rails building and I do have a blue light. I'm just going to check for heat real quick. Make sure my output transistors are not heating up due to any shorts. So I'm going to go ahead and hold power here just for a little longer. And we're looking good. I don't, I'm not seeing any heat. Not feeling any heat. So sometimes the trick about these four channel amps is you got to find the right channel. I do have rail, right? Yep, I've got rail voltage. Okay. So I need to find the signal. Somewhere around here, I am going to have a signal and once I figure out the controls of the amplifier oh found it I was on the wrong set of inputs All right, so there on your oscilloscope there in the upper left-hand corner, you, you will see the output of the amplifier. So there's one channel, two channels, three channels, and four channels. So all four channels of this amplifier are functional once again. Uh, so what I'm going to do is get this slid back into the heat sink, get it all put back together, and uh, we'll do some load testing on this amplifier to test out those new transistors. And uh, we will uh, get this back to the owner. So I do thank you guys for watching. Again, it was just a pretty simple repair, just replacing um, an NPN and PMP set uh, on one channel on an output so the owner's description of the fault was pretty accurate uh, that he shorted one of the channels out and uh and that's what happened and luckily it didn't damage that tip 31 or 32 so uh just by putting the transistors in and just doing a rough test on it just showed that the the pre-stage part of it preamp part of it is still functional which is good i was crossing my fingers i didn't have to go through and replace the uh replace the pre-driver section here so i'm i'm thankful for that and i'm sure the owner will be thankful of that also that this section here survived again like i said earlier this is a pretty robust uh setup here it would take a, a pretty significant short uh to really take out this uh, preamp area here so again i'll just get this thing buttoned up and we'll do some load testing uh thank you for watching if you guys uh if you like repair content uh please like and subscribe down below there uh, leave me your comments questions suggestions um i don't mind any any criticism at all uh and i will get back to you as soon as i can uh, thank you for watching. We'll catch you on the next one.